Okay, I think we're ready to go. Good morning or good afternoon to everyone, depending on where you are today. I'm Patty Nickel, President and CEO of Origin, and I'd like to welcome you to Origin Royalties Inaugural Prospect Generator Day. This event and other events like this that will come in the future are designed to inform our exploration partners, interested technical people, shareholders, and investors on projects that have been generated internally and are available for option or sale. Today, we will be showcasing our silicon analogs, early stage gold projects that have been created using the same methodology that our technical team used when they generated the world-class expanded silicon gold project in Nevada, now owned and operated by Anglo Gold Ashanti and where Origin holds a 1% NSR royalty. This event is being recorded and we invite all participants, regardless of your technical background, to use the Q&A features in the Zoom toolbar near the bottom of your screen. Once you've clicked on that button, you will be able to type in your comments or questions. Click anonymous if you would like your name hidden. Please note that the Zoom chat tool will be disabled during the webcast. A copy of the PDF with speaker notes is also available on our website under the tab Prospect Generator Days. This is a technical discussion, but I think both technical and non-technical people will find it an informative session and we encourage questions and we'll have an answer Q&A period at the end for, for both groups. As with any early stage exploration project, there will be forward-looking statements made today. I'd like to introduce you to our technical team who will lead today's discussion. Lawrence Pryor, Origins VP of Exploration. Eli Turner, Origins Project Geologist in Nevada. And Mark Kulba, our Chief Geoscientist. I'll now turn it over to the team. Take it away, Lawrence. Thanks, Paddy. We're going to talk a lot today about the high level surface expressions of mineral systems and how Origin are using these to vector into underlying gold systems. This is the approach that was used to identify silicon and the generative approach the team are currently advancing in Nevada. Starting with some basics. We are searching for regions of advanced argillic alteration. These are areas of intense alteration caused by highly acidic fluids at shallow depths. They consist of assemblages of kaolinite, dikite, pyrophyllite, alienite, and many other minerals. These alteration cells are of interest because they overlie many economic mineral deposits and are easy to identify with remote sensing and aerial imagery. However, they form in multiple environments. In this photo, we see the steam cap overlying the silicon deposit. There are five key environments where advanced argillic alteration commonly forms, associated with high and low sulfidation epithermal gold systems and copper-rich porphyries, but also with weathering. Some of these environments overlie precious metal deposits and others do not. On this figure, we see a schematic of a low sulfidation gold system displaying the shallow expression of a steam cap up here in yellow above vein and disseminated mineralization. Um, in a few slides, you'll see how closely the silicon cross-section resembles this model. The origin team led by Mark Kulbar have spent the last 10 years working on strategies to rapidly distinguish the environment of advanced argillic cap formation to determine which ones are most likely to overlie gold mineralization. These distinctions are based on combinations of mineral assemblage, crystal texture, crystal morphology, and associated geochemistry. This allows us to rapidly sort through the advanced argillic systems in Nevada to identify the ones with the most prospectivity for gold. On top of our team's technical skill set, we are privileged at Origin to have an incredible wealth of data at our fingertips. In Nevada alone, we have over 100,000 proprietary geochemical analyses with an additional 100,000 plus integrated and quality controlled public data points. The database also contains 5,000 PDF project files, two statewide magnetic data sets, and reports from hundreds of past exploration campaigns. On top of this database, Mark Poolbar has processed all the avarice data available. This high resolution spectral data was flown by NASA and covers over half the state. 
It is available to the public in an unprocessed form from which Mark has produced atmospherically corrected mineral maps for more than 10 minerals, as well as multiple crystallinity and strength indexes, essentially allowing us to map the surface of the state. Combining these data sets into a prospectivity model gives an incredibly powerful exploration tool, which has been the basis of an alliance with Altius for the last three years. These data and the resulting exploration work led to the exploration success of the silicon deposit on the expanded silicon project owned and operated by Anglo Gold Ashanti. Silicon was first identified as an exploration target by the Origin team in 2014 due to the presence of a large zone of advanced argillic alteration, shown on this schematic cross section by the purple, with a 20 meter thick chalcedony blanket up here in red. The cell displays no gold at surface. Origin completed staking the entirety of the alteration cell in December 2015, after it opened up from a government withdrawal. Due to the lack of gold at the surface, it took nearly three years to find a partner for the project. Once Anglo Gold Ashanti stepped in, the project rapidly advanced, with the discovery drill hole, SD004, drilled in early 2018, returning 79 meters of 1.76 grams per ton gold. Follow-up drilling, shown schematically on this cross-section in late 2018 and early 2019, added to the story, with highlights of 36.6 meters at 12.1 grams per ton and 13.7 meters at 12.7 grams per ton from the same drill hole, and up to 48.8 meters at 5.8 grams per ton. Anglo Gold Ashanti have moved the project forward quickly, to a current resource of 4.22 million ounces as of December 31st, 2022. The mineralization closely fits the model shown on the previous slide with high grade siliceous veins and disseminated mineralization hosted beneath kaolinite and allianite cell at surface. The introduction of illite shown by light, in light blue on the cross section marks a sharp increase in gold content. Follow on exploration led to the discovery of the Merlin deposit a contiguous low sulfidation system to the south of silicon, which looks to be one of the most significant gold discoveries in North America in more than a decade. The substantial discovery at Merlin, which currently totals 9.05 million ounces of inferred resource, has brought the total resource within Origins Royalty AOI to 13.3 million ounces gold. Anglo Gold Ashanti have commenced a pre feasibility study with initial indications of 5,000 ounces per year annual, annual production over multiple decades. I'm now going to hand it over to Eli in Reno to begin discussing our portfolio of silicon analogs. Today, we're going to focus on four epithermal prospects in Nevada three low sulfidation targets generated within the Altius Alliance and a high sulfidation system. All these projects are available for option or sale. Let's start with Hot Tip, a low sulfidation epithermal target staked by Origin in 2023, but is thought to be nearly fully preserved like silicon. Recent hyperspectral mapping by Origin has identified the core of the system for the first time. For those who know Nevada, we're in the Pancake Range at the southern end of a 20 kilometer long zone of hydrothermal alteration which also encompasses the historical Silverton district on its northern end. In the photo, you can see the center of the alteration cell at Hot Tip, which projects undercover towards the horizon. Hot Tip is road accessible, 120 kilometers northeast of the town of Tonopah, and covers nine square kilometers of BLM ground. The cell at Hot Tip consists of gold poor, advanced argillic alteration that origin interprets as a steam cap overlying possible gold and silver mineralization at depth. The cell is very large with a kaolinite zone measuring about five kilometers in diameter and a central zone of allunite pyrite alteration. This zone is centered on a grobin, which we believe is the main structural control of the system and along which epithermal fluids may have risen, boiled and deposited precious metals. Intense silicification is also widespread in some areas adjacent to the central ionite pyrite core. The alteration dives undercover to the south, but after about three kilometers, outcrops of bleached, solidified rhyolite with visible cinnabar locally stick up out of the alluvium, 
which drives home the district scale potential of the target for us. There's widespread geochemical anomalism on the property with select assays of over 1% arsenic and antimony, hundreds of PPM mercury, and even some low level gold anomalism. It's obvious that hot tip is a large metal rich hydrothermal system and the main controlling structures haven't been tested by previous exploration. An additional feature that got the team excited by the play at hot tip is that a large chargeability anomaly in white, pink, and orange on the figure corresponds to and extends beyond this core of alienite pyrite alteration. The outcropping area of the alteration is only about a kilometer by 400 meters, but the chargeability suggests that it's more like one kilometer by two kilometers and is tightly situated within the main graben. This adds a serious amount of size and coherency to the most intense part of the system. Although historical drilling didn't test this area, it did test jasperoids west of the chargeable ionite pyrite core up in here and intercepted anomalous gold, including 24 meters at 0.38 grams per ton. We consider this encouraging intercept to be in the peripheral parts of the alteration cell. As I've illustrated, the principal target at hot tip is the untested core of the large hydrothermal system, which consists of alunite pyrite kaolinite alteration within a grobin. The strongest alteration likely overlies an upwelling zone or area of concentrated hydrothermal fluid flow and possible ore deposition. The projection of the grobin and alteration under cover expand the blue sky potential significantly. Given the size of the alteration cell and significant geochemical anomalies within it, the team considers the center of the system to be a compelling target. This is not dissimilar to the rationale which led to the staking of silicon nearly 10 years ago. Next, we will look at the Seltz property, 13 kilometers northeast of the historic high sulfidation goldfield district and 100 kilometers northwest of the silicon discovery. Seltz contains a cell of advanced argillic alteration, shown in the photo on this slide that resembles the high sulfidation environment in the Goldfield district. But the origin team has recognized it to be steam heated alteration within a low sulfidation system. The steam cap remains untested, perhaps due to being mistaken as a barren, peripheral extension of the Goldfield district by previous groups. The alteration cell itself is centered on a tertiary rhyolite dome, shown in this geology figure in pink with an 800 meter diameter zone of advanced argillic alteration composed of alienite and kaolinite, shown in the red and oranges, respectively. This is interspersed with regions of fine grain silica flooding. The rhyolite dome is interpreted to have been extruded at the current level of exposure due to a preserved peripheral tuff ring, shown here in brown. Seltz could be one of the few epithermal systems in Nevada associated with slab window magnetism like silicon and merlin. Also like silicon, there is no gold at surface in the steam cap, but peripheral gold, including grab samples of up to 33 grams per ton, occur in quartz veins associated with illite and adularia at lower elevations, one to two kilometers from the dome, down here. Additionally, historical drilling near the gold button shaft up here returned 4.1 ppm gold over a meter and a half in a shallow drill hole. Within the rhyolite dome, flow banding show, uh, in, shown by these colored dots steepens towards a central north-south corridor that was likely the magmatic vent during dome formation. The same corridor contains the strongest alienite alteration shown by the red cross hatching indicating that it was also a conduit for steam released from boiling hydrothermal fluids. The alienite is fine-grained N-member potassium-rich alienite and is associated with fine-grained kaolinite and opalin to chalcedonic silica, consistent with formation at shallow levels in a steam cap. The area is a principal structural target for drilling. Taken together, the steam cap and peripheral gold bearing mineralized structures define a four square kilometer play. The Seltz property contains high level steam cap exposures and has the potential to host low sulfidation gold mineralization at depth, as evidenced by peripheral gold showings in topographic lows. As shown on the below cross section, 
Origin envisions a target at salts consisting of structurally controlled zones at depth beneath advanced argillic alteration, with the surrounding mafic volcanics, shown here in green, acting as an impermeable cap to the mineralizing fluid, such that the gold mineralization may cover a much greater area than the steam cap. The property is on road accessible BLM land with a clear and unencumbered pathway to drill testing. Nevada is a mature jurisdiction where exposed veins at surface have been explored and exploited for decades, hence necessitating the need for advanced exploration strategies using the mineral systems approach that identified silicon, hot tip, and salt. However, in rare circumstances, geopolitics creates opportunities to stake bonanza grade, undrilled veins at surface. Forens is an example of that. Located 170 kilometers east of Reno, the 90 claims are on BLM ground with excellent road access. At Forens, the Origin technical team identified an opportunity to stake a 1.5 square kilometer zone of outcropping gold-rich epithermal veins, which have recently been released from a wilderness study area. The release is shown here by the gray cross hatching. Minor artisanal production had occurred after discovery of the veins in the 1860s, but they had never been drilled, as Ferenc had been in the wilderness study area since 1980, prohibiting drilling and project advancement. Ferenc was released in December 2022 and staked shortly thereafter by the Reno-based team. Sampling of the bonanza-grade vein material from historical workings up here returned up to 43.9 grams per tonne gold with 534 grams per tonne silver and 22.5 grams per tonne gold with 1825 grams per tonne silver. The outcropping quartz adularia veins are up to 1.5 meters wide, occur with illite, kaolinite, akinfite, and silver sulfur salts, and are hosted within a rhyolitic intracaldera tuff. These geological characteristics are typical of the boiling zones of epithermal systems. Veins, precious metal grades, and alteration mineralogy extend up to the contact with post-mineral alluvium to the east, here on the figure shown by the orange polygon, and presumably extend under cover. An upgrown horse block down here in blue, uh, immediately to the east of the Ferenz veins, indicates cover is shallow for a distance of at least a kilometer and a half out into the pediment. The shallow alluvium hosts an accommodation zone developed in basin bounding faults east of the outcropping veins, as shown here on this figure, which displays the quaternary faults of the Edwards Creek Valley. Some of these faults have quaternary motion, but considering the maturity of the basin and range topography, the faults are likely to have been active during the tertiary. This zone may be the primary structural control at the core of the epithermal system, with the outcropping veins representing the lateral, outlying parts of the system. This is similar to the setting of the high-grade sleeper deposit in Nevada, discovered in the 1980s, which was under shallow alluvial cover next to alteration and mineralization exposed in the slumbering hills. The sleeper deposit produced nearly 1.7 million ounces of gold from 1986 to 1996, from famously high grade veins and surrounding stock works. They returned head grades over 25 grams per tonne. As shown on the below cross section, Origin envisioned the potential for blind, high grade gold veins and disseminated mineralization in this untested structural zone, as well as at depth in the areas of outcropping veins. Exploration of the veins could be rapidly advanced because they occur on BLM ground with excellent infrastructure and access. Now onto our final project, Pearl Stream. As discussed at the start of this presentation, Origin's technical team have spent the last decade learning how to distinguish between styles of advanced argillic alteration associated with gold mineralization. Up to now in this webinar, we focused on cells associated with high sulfidation, with low sulfidation epithermal systems, excuse me, like silicon. In other cases, cells can indicate the potential for high sulfidation gold systems hosted by quartz and alunite, which have similarities to low sulfidation systems, but merit a different exploration approach. 
You can see typical high solvidation alteration in this photo from Pearl String, which shows strong advanced argillic alteration. It contains narrow structures that run up to 12 grams per ton gold. Pearl String is a data-rich project with multiple layers of geophysics, framework drilling, and a robust drill-ready target concept. The project consists of 201 claims covering approximately 17 square kilometers of BLM ground, located 150 kilometers southeast of Reno and 30 kilometers north of the town of Hawthorne. At Pearl String, Origins claim position covers the northwestern portion of a 25 kilometer long trend of 20 million year old advanced argillic alteration. The alteration trend shows widespread gold anomalism and at its southern tip, Fortitude Gold is actively producing from the high sulfidation Isabella Pearl Mine. The region has been dissected by multiple post-mineral faults, including the dextral gumdrop fault shown here, which is an important feature of Pearl String. A new model of post-mineral faulting based on work by the Origin team shows the potential for a multi-million ounce target beneath alluvial cover at the north end of the property. Alteration at Pearl String is controlled by northwest trending normal faults, but has also been offset by post-mineral faults with similar orientations. Post-mineral faults include relatively young right lateral strike slip structures associated with Walker Lane deformation that have been studied in detail by academic geologists, most notably the gumdrop fault. However, they also include concealed post-mineral normal faults that are older than these strike slip structures and whose importance has only been recently clarified due to new constraints from drilling by a previous partner. An attempt to undo post-mineral faulting shows that the Chucker Ridge area, which is strongly altered and has high grade structurally controlled gold mineralization, restores to the north and west beneath post-mineral cover. This area, which constitutes Origin's main target, is also surrounded by strongly altered outcrops and anomalous gold. This slide conceptually illustrates the structural model proposed by Origin. After the initial formation of the postulated high sulfidation system, which was controlled by Northwest striking normal faults, post-mineral offsets occurred along likely the same structures. Normal offsets are evidenced by the truncation of alteration along low angle structures and variations in the depth of the tertiary Mesozoic unconformity encountered in drilling. Then, Approximately seven kilometers of post-mineral dextral offset occurred along the gumdrop fault, as documented by multiple academic studies. This gives rise to the previously unrecognized concept that the alteration at Chucker Ridge may be an offset portion of a larger deposit, which is under post-mineral cover to the north, and that the high-grade gold occurrences at Chucker Ridge might constitute offset portions of the principal feeder structure. The target concept of Pearl String can be distilled down to a few key observations. This area of post-mineral alluvium is surrounded by strong advanced argillic alteration, indicating that the alteration continues under cover. This is supported by a subdued mag signature consistent with hydrothermal alteration. Historical drilling just to the west returned an encouraging intercept of 12 meters at 0.46 ppm gold which may represent mineralization in the peripheral part of a high sulfidation system. Most interestingly, strong alteration and high-grade gold mineralization to the southeast at Chucker Ridge are predicted to restore beneath this post-mineral cover, indicating that this could be the heart of the hydrothermal system that has produced all the smoke in the area. An accurate understanding of post-mineral faulting is a critical component of exploration success in Nevada as evidenced by major districts like Cortez and Yarrington, and we believe this new angle could unlock the next discovery. Here's a cross-sectional view illustrating the scale of the target discussed on the previous slide. The potential exists for a multi-million ounce high sulfidation deposit, similar in size and grade to Solaris Norte in Chile or Paradise Peak nearby in Nevada, and the target could be tested with an efficient and easy to permit truck-mounted drill program. Great, thanks Eli and to Lawrence for that. Uh, Origins based Reno team, Origins Reno based team, technical team are continuing to develop epithermal targets in Nevada in partnership with Altius Minerals. In addition to these targets, 
an exciting new project is evolving based on the acquisition of new high resolution spectral data in a remote corner of Western United States, not covered by the historic avarice. This work has identified several large undrilled alteration cells and the team are excited to get on the ground in the coming days to advance these targets. We believe demand for these targets is going to increase as Angle Gold Ashanti continues to advance the Silicon Merlin target with 12 drill rigs on site focused on enhancing the model of mineralization. And as the full magnitude of the opportunity for world-class epithermal systems within this region becomes more apparent. Origin's portfolio represents early stage drill ready targets ready for option or sale and more details, including full technical presentations can be found on our website. So we look forward uh, to your questions now and future discussion. Uh, for those of you who attended late, um, we would like to remind you of the events being recorded and there's a, a Q and A features at the bottom of the Zoom toolbar. Once you've clicked on that button, You'll be able to insert comments, questions, and click anonymous if you want your name to be hidden. And uh, please note that the Zoom chat tool will remain disabled. The copy of the PDF and the notes that are included from the, the speaker notes today will be included on our website under the prospect generator tab. So uh, Q&A, uh, we have a, a few questions now. Um, so I'll, I'll put it out to the team to, to answer these. And, and the first one is in regards to hot tip. Can you rule out that the hydrothermal system is truncated by a low angle normal fault at depth? Eli or Mark, do one of you want to take that? Oh, I, I could uh, uh, talk to that. Um, uh, we we In our mapping, we've done... Uh, spent some time mapping the hydrothermal systems and va validating the uh, hyperspectral anomalies. And we see in uh, a number of cases, the, the, more, the more intense alteration, including alunite, penetrating long structures into the basement carbonate rocks beneath the uh, altered volcanics. And so there is a, some low angle structure and motion along the uh, boundary or the unconformity between volcanic rocks and Paleozoic rocks. Uh, but we see that that uh, the hydrothermal system is clearly post-dating that motion. Okay, great. <clears throat> Thanks, Mark. Uh, one other question coming in. Can you explain the reasons you believe the mineralization at Forenza extends under cover? Eli, this is this is your project. Yeah, sure, I can take this one. So there are a few reasons why we're thinking along those lines. Um, firstly, if the outcrop isn't very good at Forenza, there's a lot of covered areas, but where even you know with this poor sort of outcrop, it's very clear that the alteration and veining goes right up to the contact with post-mineral alluvial cover and post-mineral basalts. Um, you know, there are there are several instances. Uh, several locations at which you can observe that relationship very clearly. So we know that it's open ended undercover. Um, secondly, you know, there is a major structural zone, really the most, you know, significant structural zone in the area um, that is just to the east of the outcropping mineralization, also undercover, as we kind of discussed uh, in the presentation. And then thirdly, I mean, you know, of course, we don't know for a fact that the mineralization extends undercover and is associated with this major structural zone, although that's certainly a valid geological hypothesis. But something that, you know, also kind of, uh, you know, gets us a little bit excited about this one is the fact that the sort of rationale for exploring undercover to the east of the project is very similar to the discovery rationale for the sleeper uh, deposit, which was discovered in Nevada and was a high grade producer for a number of years. Um, at that location, there was sort of sub-economic mineralization, low sulfidation, epithermal mineralization, outcropping in the slumbering hills, and, uh, you know, exploration immediately to the east of that, or not, not to the east of it, but immediately, you know, adjacent to that undercover uh, led to the high-grade discovery. So, you know, we see that as being a, a very good exploration thesis for Forenza. All right. Okay, thanks, Eli. Um, Another question regarding friends. Can you give a, uh, somebody, can they give a bit more detail on the wilderness study area 
uh, situation at Friends because this was a project that was obviously released from that, and which which has got us excited and, and involved in the area in the first place. Yeah, I can take that one too. Yeah. Um, so WSA, uh, as it's been noted in the question, stands for Wilderness Study Area. That is essentially a common classification of protected land in the Western United States. You effectively cannot um, do mineral exploration on it, or you at least can't use any mechanized equipment, which you know basically precludes any sort of serious exploration. Forenza was uh, put into a WSA in 1980. Uh, you know, kind of you know as gold interest in gold exploration was really ramping up in the Western United States, uh, and it was released in 2022. So that's why you have this kind of unique unique situation of high grade veins uh, being undrilled in Nevada. And right after it was released in 2022, uh, which was done as part of a federal bill that was passed, the National Defense Authorization Act uh, of 2023, which was passed in December of 2022, uh, the team was pretty much right on it and we picked it up immediately. All right, <clears throat> thanks Eli. A um, couple more questions coming in. Um, can you identify supergene versus hypogene alunite from the Avaris data and what does that tell you about the prospectivity of a lithocap? Mark, that's uh, that's definitely a Mark question. Oh, okay. Um, well, it's a bit tricky with uh, airborne imagery. Uh, the uh, Some of the key absorption features for distinguishing composition of alunite and its crystallinity are located very close to atmospheric interference interferences, but uh, the degree of crystallinity of the alunite and its uh, potential intermediate composition of sodium versus potassium can be important clues as to whether that alunite formed at uh, greater depths or not. But in the field, it's uh, easier to get uh, good samples of alunite and, and assess those questions more accurately. In the case of uh, hot tip, we, we have places where <laughs> There is, is pyrite that hasn't been oxidized yet, so the opportunity for acidic supergene fluids uh, to produce ionite is not present in those samples, and, and we see ionite. And so that lets us know that the ionite uh, at uh, hot tip is uh, hypogene, not, and uh, we don't think it occurred, at, it, we don't think it's a lithocap style of, of deep ionite alteration because we see only... Uh, and member ionite compositions of sodium and potassium both sometimes in I, the same sample. I think that's the key. We can use the remote sensing to identify the avarice, but it has to be paired with the field observations on composition, geochemistry, mineralogy, um, crystal morphology uh, to truly determine, you know, which what is the environment of formation. Okay, thanks. Um, Mark, this probably is another question for you. Um, can you give maybe a bit of commentary on the northwestern and northeastern quadrants in silicon in terms of prospectivity well it's uh there are a lot of directions at the uh, at silicon and merlin in particular that are still open uh anglo has been drilling the property very rapidly and bringing these uh this deposit into a, a resource category over a very short period of time, it takes a long time to pull 9 million ounces into a resource. And they've identified important targets just to the north east, northwest along important structural corridors that we've seen in the field. We know they're there. And there's some uh, a, a post-mineral fault that's cut off some of the best mineralization on the southeast as well. So it's really, in spite of its size, it's still... Uh, it's. Uh, a very open deposit and still a very dynamic situation of de defining resources. Yeah, I think there are a couple of things we know, if I can add something, Mark, you know, looking at this figure, that northernmost line is a caldera margin. And from what Anglo Gold have told us, the caldera postdates most mineralization. You know, they went as far as to say it's a miracle silicon's not being blown sky high. Uh, we're not entirely sure about that, but I would say north of that caldera margin, which is relatively approximate, you probably have quite low prospectivity. But what is known is that 900 meters north of the deposit is that piezometer hole that they drilled where they have said, without any numbers, they found significant intercepts. Um, so I think 
the potential along this structure and then also down towards the Merlin deposit is significant, but might take some time to evolve. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of it for our questions today. Um, if there's none other, no other questions, I don't see any others appearing right now. Um, I think we can call it uh, a session. That's great, guys. Thanks to everyone for attending today. And thank you for the team for putting up the presentation. Hope for everybody it was informative. And please let us know if you have any other questions. And again, the uh, presentation along with speaker notes will be available on our website. And uh, look forward to bringing this to you again in the future. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.